Hi everyone, and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I'm Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok, and this is episode 7 of my 2024 podcast series. You may have noticed a couple changes in our background. Uh, yesterday I reorganized my yarn stash. I know I had been talking about it for the last couple of weeks and I was finally able to take the time, have the mental capacity, and reorganize everything. So I was also able to get my uh, runner up, it's actually a scarf, from Carrie Woolen Mills that I got in Ireland. I was able to put that up as like my little decoration, which was what I wanted to do with it all along. So I'm really happy right now with the like status of this and how it looks and uh, yeah, the video. I had the mental capacity to film it all for a video. Uh, the video should be coming out probably not this week, but next week. Um, it is going to be part of a spring cleaning your yarn stash series. The first video will be all about de-stashing and that will be coming later this week. The organization video will come next week, the week after, and then there will be a third video on intentionally purchasing yarn to build up your collection and that'll be coming the week after that. So a lot of stuff right here off the bat and I also wanted to give a shout out to Yarn Lover whose uh, t-shirt I'm wearing today and I love it. It's a fun one. You can find her on Instagram. Uh, I'll link her in the description box down below. She's local here in Southern California. I met her finally at this the uh, yeah, SoCal Fiber Fair. Fiber Fest? Fiber Fair that we had in November uh, last year, so that was fun. And that's what I'm wearing today. Okay, knitting that I've done this week. According to my journal, I only completed half of the goals that I set for myself this week. However, I'm feeling really good about where I'm at with a lot of my projects. Last week I know I came on and I was like, I'm in a slump. <laughs> I'm not feeling it and you know we all go through those ups and downs and I was in a down space and I really do think like that happens to me a lot especially after one week or a couple weeks of like not being able to knit very much at all and this week I had a decent amount of time to knit so I'm feeling good about where I'm at. The projects that I did work on, um, most of them I like completed more than what my goal was. So instead of working on, you know, all six of my projects, I really only focused on three of them. Well, yeah, three of them. Well, no, I've got four here. One, two, three, four. Four of them. <laughs> and uh, was able to get a lot done on them. So. The projects that we are not going to be talking about today are my Farnham sweater, yes, my favorite one. I did not take the time to pick up the stitches for one of the front panels uh, this week, so I don't have any progress on the Farnham sweater. And we're also not going to be talking about my Sweet Shop blanket again. Look, I do think I'm getting closer to picking that one back up. I have like thoughts and inspiration uh, for starting like two more blankets, but I feel like it, I do feel like it's like very irresponsible for me at least to have more than one blanket on the needles at one time. Um, and so I would love to get the Sweet Shop blanket like done before I start one of my next blanket projects. Um, the one that I have talked about, well, I've talked about both of them on the podcast before. The one I've talked about most recently is my Taylor Swift themed blanket, which I do still have yarn coming for that. Um, so I wouldn't want to start that right now anyways. I'm still trying to figure out if I want to do like knit squares for that one, if I want to do like a crochet granny square, or just some sort of different blanket entirely. I think I'm going to need to see like all of the yarn that I have for it laid out first and then kind of decide from there 
what I want the blanket to actually look like. When I was going through my stash uh, yesterday, I had a couple other like Taylor Swift themed yarns, mostly from Sorelli Yarn and her Taylor Swift collection. And I pulled those out to add to my blanket stash also. So looking forward to that one. The second blanket that I have in mind, and this is the one that I like originally wanted to start first, was my Emily Henry book themed blanket. I've got the yarn from Red Door Fiber Studio and Explorer Knits and Fibers that are related to the four Emily Henry books that are currently released, and so I want to make I originally wanted to make the Sweet Shop blanket with those yarns. Um, now I'm considering the next blanket that I know Laura Penrose is going to put out, the Stella blanket. It's going to be, I haven't seen like a full photo yet because I don't think Laura has a finished sample yet, but it's going to be similar to the Stella quilt cushion that she has put out and so it'll be like repeating motifs. Right now there's only four Emily Henry books and so there's only four Emily Henry skeins. However, I did buy the sock sets so I've got the minis to go along with them that could make up like a fifth motif. And then there is another book that's coming out I believe in April of this year. So I'm thinking there may be another yarn uh, skein another color that will go along with the next book so I might be waiting on that one a little bit longer just to see if another uh, colorway comes out so that's the the blanket story uh, again I wasn't really expecting to tell you all of that but here you go I'm in a chatty mood today um, so let's get into the actual projects that I did work on this week, and we're going to start with a finished object, my Oslo hat. Yes, I have finally finished this Oslo hat that has been on my needles since January 18th. I finished this on February 19th. Finally, I just sat down and took the time and I finally did it. So let me show you. Dun, 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 dun. I'm so happy with it. It looks so good. Um, this is, okay, let me give you the stats on this. Uh, I'm going to put a photo up while I talk through all of these stats. So this is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. The yarn that I used for it is, show you, Paisley Knits, uh, her colorway Poseidon on her Krabby DK base, which is a 100% superwash merino, 246 yards per 100 grams. I used a 3.5 millimeter needle to knit this, and I knit the size large in the pattern, though I did add on about eight extra stitches on top of the stitch count for the size large. So here's the thing with the Oslo hats. I have knit like 10 of them at this point. The My favorite way to knit an Oslo hat is with two strands of fingering weight yarn and a 3.75 millimeter needle or a four millimeter needle depending on the thickness of that fingering weight yarn. For this one, I knit it on one single strand of DK weight yarn and a 3.5 millimeter needle. So because I didn't have the extra like thickness and density of the two strands of fingering weight, I knew I needed to go down a needle size to like get that tightness with one strand of DK weight yarn. Because I was going down in needle size, I knew my gauge would be tighter, so it would be more stitches per inch. I knew that I probably needed to add on some stitches to account for like the full circumference of a large size hat. So this is the finished object. Um, you can probably tell it is a little like drapey. I think is probably the right word, which, you know what, actually, let me get, I'll be right back. Okay, I wanna show you the like 
density, drapiness, structure, all of these terms that I've been talking about and trying to explain to you uh, of like a DK single strand DK weight version of this hat versus two strands of fingering weight. Can you actually tell the difference? I don't know if you can tell on camera, but when you hold this, this is the one that I knit, one of the ones that I've knit recently with two strands of fingering weight. The structure of it, the density of the fabric, the thickness of it, you can tell it's just like more what you're going to want to see for a hat. Now I think I did pretty good with this one, especially compared to the last hat that I knit uh, with just one strand of DK weight yarn. I do think this one is... Um, like tighter and the fabric is better. I'm really happy with the brim because it actually is staying folded up. I don't know where my husband put his <laughs> version, um, but I showed it a couple times on the last couple episodes and like the brim would not, does not do this. Um, so I am happy with how this is working out. Okay, this is for a man, so their head is going to be larger than mine and it won't look as like large and crazy hopefully when they wear it but I mean it's not bad I think this is going to fit really nicely um, and I think it's going to look good so hopefully I'll get a photo when I send this off to its recipient and maybe on one of the next episodes We'll have one last conversation about this Oslo hat, and uh, I'll give you the details from its recipient. So, that's it. My first finished object, it feels like, in so long. Um, I finished that hat literally Sunday night. No, was it Monday? Sunday or Monday? Whenever I filmed the last podcast, I was like... I need a finished object so I can like get my knitting mojo back and like literally like six hours later I finished that hat and I was like oh I feel so much better now. <laughs> so uh, yeah I knew what I needed to do and then I did it and then I felt better. So that's good. All right, let's move on to our works in progress and the first project I'm going to talk to you about is my Ingrid sweater. <laughs> Okay, I finally have an update for you on my Ingrid sweater and before we get into the actual knitting itself I wanted to show you <laughs> the uh, crazy fun project bag that I'm keeping it in yes this is not actually a project bag this is like a full handbag but Teddy Blake the brand reached out to me and asked if I was interested in trying one of their products and so I went onto the website I was checking them all out and I saw this color and I was like ooh you know what Rachel from Rachel is Knitting would love this bag this color and then I saw the bag that it you know this uh, model specifically and I was like you know what that would be just a really nice bag in general and so I said yes and I was like you can send me this bag I would love to use it um, as a project bag put some matching yarn inside of it and so they did and this is it and it's really fun so let me tell you a little bit about the brand I've got my notes here so this is what I'm reading from Teddy Blake creates handbag designs for every style choice using premium Italian leather and experienced craftsmen. Each bag is made in Italy with high quality construction, attention to detail, imaginative design, shape, and durability. The other cool thing about Teddy Blake handbags is the price. You'll find them significantly less expensive than other brand name, like fancy brand name designer handbags. So the specific one that I chose is the Kate Stampato 12 inch in the color lilac and I'm able to fit in here my whip, two of my scrap balls, and I've got four skeins of yarn in here. And so if you're interested in checking this out for yourself, 
I've got a link for you down in the description box below. This video is not sponsored by Teddy Blake, but they did send me the bag for free, and so just wanted, if you want to check them out, please <laughs> check them out in the link in the description box down below. Okay, <sighs> let's move on and let's actually talk about my Ingrid sweater. So the last time we talked about my Ingrid sweater, I was having issues with the neckline and I think I'm feeling better about it. Sorry, there's, you know, as always, a million ends on this project and I'm trying to <laughs> tuck them all in so it doesn't look like a complete mess when you are looking at this on the screen. Okay, so here's where we're at now. Let's talk first about the neck. So I ripped out the double knit button band the double knit collar uh, that I did have, if you remember, it was like really pulling in tight the kind of top part here of the sweater. It was sitting up weird when I tried it on and it was just, I think it was just too thick also. So what I did was I ripped the whole thing out. I ripped out the crochet pickup and I redid the crochet pickup with a larger hook size. The first time I had used a four millimeter hook and this time I used a five point five millimeter hook so I went up a whole one and a half millimeters in hook size really hoping that kind of it's not gonna scrunch it all in as much I do still see some pulling here on the front cross hatching but it's definitely not as bad as it was before so I only did also 10 rows 10 rounds and I think I think I'm gonna leave this as a single folded collar. I put it on stretchy cords so that I could decide later. I think when I add, you know, the rest of the body and the sleeves, you know, I'll definitely get a better understanding of how the sweater is like sitting, how it feels, how I like the neckband placement. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. I think this is how it's going to end up and then if I do decide this is what I want I will do a um, sewn bind off on the edges here so that it looks really nice and we'll leave it at that. So hopefully <laughs> the neckline saga is over but we'll see when I get closer to the end of this sweater. The other thing that I did, so that was my like goal for this week, was to just redo the neckline. But, um, like I said before, I worked more on this sweater and I surpassed my goal. And I picked up the stitches for the body, got them back on the needles, and started the next section here. See, this is like really unwieldy to hold, which is the double moss stitch section. So I added this um, progress keeper. It's a little moon and star, so you can see where I was before. I've done not very much. I've done like eight rows, so maybe like an inch. Um, double moss stitch, you know, it's all one by one ribbing, knit, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Um, so it's, you know, it's not the fastest knitting, but I am happy about it. I'm happy I'm back working on the body and uh, continuing on with my Ingrid sweater. Anyways, I'm really happy with where I'm at now. So my goal for this week is going to be to finish the double moss stick stitch section um, and get close to starting the cross hatch section. So I don't know if it's doable. That's kind of a lot of knitting. I gotta do, I need to do, actually, you know what? It's probably doable. I need to do 20 rows total and I'm almost halfway. I'm on row number nine. So I'm almost halfway. I, I could probably get that done. That's probably realistic. So there you go. 
Um, I was just looking at my Twice Shared Sheep row counter, and if you're interested in knowing how I use these, I have a full video tutorial on my channel on how I use the row counter. So you can go check that out from a couple weeks ago. Okay, that was the update on my... Ingrid sweater, I realized I didn't actually tell you like any of the stats or anything for it, so let me just go over that quickly now. It's the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. The yarn that I'm using for it is Treehouse Knits on her Dove DK base, and the colorway is called Harvest Moon. This is a 100% superwash merino yarn, 246 yards per 100 grams, and it's this gorgeous, like, light purple, lilac, lavender color, again, that really matched really well with my new bag for it, so. The size that I'm making for my Ingrid sweater, I'm making the extra large, which is the fifth pattern size. It corresponds with a 50.5 inch circumference. I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles for the body. I used 3.75 millimeter needles for the neck ribbing. And for the body ribbing, I will likely use four millimeter needles. Um, one other point to note is that the pattern actually calls for a worsted weight yarn. I am using a DK weight yarn because I was able to meet the gauge of 20 stitches for four inches with a 4.5 millimeter needle and DK weight yarn. So keep that in mind if you are knitting the Ingrid sweater. Okay, I think that's all of the stats for that. And I told you the update and the goal for next week. So let's move on to my next project, which is the Cal Cardigan. <music> Okay, so this is the Cal Cardigan by Claire Jackson, and the yarn that I'm using for this, ooh, I have wound it all up. I don't have a full skein to show you anymore, but the yarn that I'm using for this is Bella Filato Studio in her Bella Worsted Base on the colorway Cozy Flannel. It's a 100% superwash merino yarn. 218 yards per 100 grams. So my goal for this week was to get half of the body stitches done. So that would have been 20 rows. And I did not meet that goal. I got uh, 10 rows done. So half of my goal. <laughs> but here we go. Here it is. Very unwieldy. Uh, let me see. I'll turn it around to the back side. So here's where I was. Here's the 10 rows that I did complete. And so I've got 30 rows left. And then I think we'll be able to do the ribbing. Um, I do, you know, I had completed most of the sleeves. But I still need to finish the sleeves. And then I'll be done with this. My current thoughts and feelings on this whip. Um, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> I want it to be done so badly, but I just like really don't have the drive or motivation to work on this project. The rows for the body are really long and it's knit one row and then purl one row. So I've been working on this kind of like whenever I've got work meetings, this is a decent one that I can work on where like I don't really have to think about it. I'm kind of distracted by something else um, and I'm just like knitting away and like not looking at it and not realizing that I'm like over working on this project. But I do want it to be done. I do want to be able to wear it. I need more cardigans in my hand knit wardrobe. So I don't know. I, I don't know what I need to make this a priority. What like mindset shift do I need to have? But this one, this project is now the closest that I have uh, to being complete. So that really should light a fire under my butt, but it hasn't yet. So we'll see this week if I feel any better about it. Um, I'm just gonna, I, I don't know. I'm gonna set the goal to do 20 more rows. Um, 
and we'll see how it goes. At that point then I'll be like for the week after I would have 10 more rows plus I can do the ribbing and like maybe end the body and be done with it. We'll then fix the sleeves, finish the sleeves, and then be done with it. I don't know. We'll see. <sighs> we'll see. I've had this on the needle since January 4th, so it really, <laughs> in my opinion, needs to be done very, very soon. But, all right, that's the update. That's my Cal Cardigan. Working on it very slowly. I want it to be done. But I don't want to work on it. <laughs> All right, let me talk to you now about the last project update, and this is my Riley tee. I really like working on this project, okay? This is my Riley tee by Rachel Kurihara, and the yarn that I'm using for this is Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co., in the colorway Diamond of the First Water on her Romanticy, Regency Romance, sorry, on her Regency Romance DK base, which is a 50% superwash merino, 50% silk yarn, 100 grams, 218 yards, 200 meters. This yarn, four skeins of it, were very kindly gifted to me by Selena from Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. Uh, for working with her as an affiliate and to help her market the launch of the Bridgerton Collection. So this is one of the colorways from the Bridgerton Collection. It's actually themed um, from Daphne, who was, you know, in season one, episode one, anointed the Diamond of the First Water by Queen Charlotte. And I love this color so much. When you look at it up close, you can see the subtle variegation on a blue, light blue base, but it's got those purple and pink and cream color with colors in it. Um, but from far away, it really does read more of just like a, a light blue. And I love the 50% merino, 50% silk base that this is on because I think this is going to be a really nice spring and summer tea for me, especially here in Southern California. So let me show you where I'm at. My goal for this week was just to finish the back panel and I did so much more. I'm really proud of myself. So I should have steam blocked this for you because it's curling a little bit, but Here's the back panel. See, doesn't it look so good? Okay, it's kind of wide. Here is where I was. This is a stitch marker from Wendy at Warm Stripes. It's a little ceramic heart. Very cute. Anyway, so here's where I was, and I did all of this this week, and I picked up both the front right and the front left, knit the two fronts, joined the front in the round, and I've done several inches of the front. I'm only, let's see, 25 rows away from joining the front and the back panel in the round. So that's definitely gonna be my goal for this week. It's moving along really nicely. I wanted to get a decent amount of this done by the time the collection launches on March 1st, and then I'll have to see how I'm feeling about it. I might put this on hold so that I can knit up, finish knitting it up um, in May when the new season drops. Season 3 of Bridgerton is coming out uh, at the end of May, I think. Um, or I could just finish it now and then wear this while watching new season of Bridgerton and while knitting up another project because I'm probably going to get some more yarn from the collection when it goes live because um, I really love all of the colors. But um, well, we'll talk more about that in a, in a minute, but I just wanted to show you, so this is a really interesting um, construction for a tee. It's a saddle shoulder, so you actually knit this twisted rib band first, and then you pick up stitches, you know, from the back and from the front. 
you can probably see a little bit of bumpiness where my pickup edge is it's not necessarily from the pickup it's actually from the short rows and the way that the shaping is done on both the the front and the back panel i think this will block out a little bit not fully and i it's just the nature of how short rows look um, I've noticed this on like all of my sweater projects that have short rows. They kind of look bumpy like this and I don't know if that's something like I'm doing when I'm knitting it or if it's just the nature of short rows. So if you have any tips on how to like get rid of that lumpiness look, let me know in a comment down below because... I don't know, I haven't figured that out yet, but um, the stats on this tee are that I'm knitting a size extra large, which corresponds with a 49 inch circumference. That includes about three to five inches of positive ease. I'm using 4.5 millimeters on the body, and I also use 4.5 millimeter needles on those twisted rib uh, shoulder saddle pieces. The pattern gauge is 20 stitches per 28 rows. My gauge is about 22 stitches per 28 rows. Um, so I am expecting the circumference to be a little bit less than what it what it says in the pattern. It says 49 inches so I'll probably end up somewhere between 45 and 47 inches which is fine. That still gives me you know three to five inches of positive ease. So that's perfect. Um, yeah, so that's the update on the actual knitting of this. The goal for this week will be to join it in the round and I'm really excited about it. Okay, so since this will be the last YouTube video that comes out before the collection launch this Friday, let me show you all of the colors now that have come out for the Bridgerton collection. So there are 14 colorways total, 7 variegated colors, and 7 tonals. They vary from like a dark purple through pinks, blues, greens, and there's even a new colorway uh, that has a little bit of yellow in it that is called I curl for you that is based on Daphne's little tiny curly bangs from season one which is just so hilarious I love that so much my favorite color let me show you is this like dark pinky purple that's named the object of all my desires it's based off of Kate from season two she wears these like deep pink dresses a lot of the time and it's absolutely gorgeous I think that is the color that I'm going to get and purchase for myself from this collection um, but these are definitely all very spring and summer colorways definitely you can see the Bridgerton theme coming through on all of them so if you're a fan of the books or of the Netflix show I'd really recommend shopping this collection I mentioned this in the last episode, but I just want to give you a couple tips. So Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. is located in Norway. So if you're shopping from the US, Canada, somewhere in North America, um, I know shipping is sometimes a worry because you may think that shipping costs may be more. I don't know the exact cost of shipping, but Selena wanted me to mention that free international shipping is available on orders over 2,500 Norwegian krone, which is about $235. It is also worth noting due to a favorable exchange rate that their yarn is priced relatively low in US dollars compared to many other US dyers. So that is something to keep in mind. Additionally, Selena offers an anti-fat tax code of 10% off six or more skeins using the code anti-fat tax which is really nice. So if you are worried about the shipping, maybe there's an opportunity to pool your order with a friend and order together to save on that shipping cost. At that point, you may also hit that $235 threshold for free international shipping. You never know. 
depending on what you want to order. So I'm very excited for this collection and I'm very excited and happy to be working with Selena. She has been such a joy to work with. So if you are interested in shopping this collection, you can use the affiliate link that I have in the description box down below. I will also be posting more and more as the week goes on and we get closer to the launch date on Friday uh, on my Instagram stories. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to go follow me over there at Nick California. A couple other news items that I just wanted to touch on here. Uh, Dusty Yarn Co's For Real Life collection, which is a bluey inspired collection, is now live on their site. They do a dyed to order model and all of these colorways are so fun and you can definitely see the bluey inspiration in all of them. So go check them out if you're interested in that. And lastly, I created some merch, okay? <laughs> yes, I saved this to the end because it's kind of a weird one for me to talk about, but I created some merch. The story behind this is um, I saw someone wearing this t-shirt. Um, it had a really cool, like, semicircle font. It was promoting a coffee house, and then it had a logo in the middle. And I saw this t-shirt, and I was like, I want that shirt and I want it to say it in California and I want it to have some flowers in the middle. And so I made a design in Canva and the short story of this is I opened a spread shirt shop. Um, I have seen other people, other Instagram, uh, other knitting YouTubers uh, sell merch through Spreadshirt shops and I did a little bit of research, realized that it's like very easy from my end and it's nice from your end because you can choose like whatever type of shirt, apparel, whatever size you want, whatever color you want and spread shirt, the shop, takes care of like designing it all, fulfilling the orders and shipping them out to you. So I have two designs in the shop right now. The first one is this Nick California logo with the orange poppy flowers. This is the one that I like originally designed. I love it so much. You can get it on t-shirts, tank tops, sweatshirts, uh, stickers, a hat, there's all sorts of things in the shop. It's crazy. Um, I will not mention that not all of the apparel designs are size inclusive. However, there is at least one. The Gildan Unisex T is size inclusive. Uh, one of the Gildan sweatshirts, I believe, is also size inclusive up to a 5XL. Additionally, there's a second design that I created because my friend Faith was like, um, I'll buy this if it is a hot pink Oslo hat. And I was like, okay, bet. <laughs> so I drew up a sticker design that is a hot pink Oslo hat and it's super cute. It is also on a crew neck sweatshirt because my friend Sarah wanted to buy the hot pink hat on the Adidas crew neck sweatshirt. So if you're looking for that design on a different uh, clothing item or something, send me a message and I'll make it happen. Um, it has been really fun just to like draw these little designs and then put them up as merch. Please don't feel like you need to purchase anything, but it's there if you're interested. I am going to be bringing a whole bunch of stickers to the Rose City Yarn Crawl. I don't know if I mentioned, but I'm going to the Rose City Yarn Crawl in Portland at the beginning of March. Is that? Hold on. That's not next week, is it? Is it next week? It's next week. Okay, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, well, yeah, in like 10 days or whatever. Not this... What is it? Not this coming weekend, but the weekend following. Um, I'll be at the Rose City Yarn Crawl. Uh, I'll be hanging out with Rachel from Rachel is Knitting and Ella, who was on the Irish Knitting Tour with us. So I'm so excited. And um, yeah, I'll have stickers there to hand out. So if you see me and you want a sticker, let me know. 
Um, but yeah, if you're interested in buying any of that merch, um, I think it's all, like, if you're watching this video on YouTube, like, on a computer or on your phone, th there should be, like, a banner, like, right underneath the video that has some of the designs. If you click on one of them, it'll take you to the link. The link will take you to the actual like spread shirt shop and then you can browse like all of the the designs and stuff available so i've got my samples coming i can't wait uh to be wearing them on the podcast it's gonna be so much fun so exciting to have nick california merch anyways i think that's it this week i am looking forward to just knitting away on more of these projects. I wonder if I'll get any uh, yarn mail this week. I'm not sure if I've got anything that's out for delivery. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will hit that subscribe button so you can always uh, know when I post another video. Go over and follow me on Instagram at Knit California. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Oh, mm -hmm.